all of you today we are going to learn redox titration in this we will be seeing how to write down the half cell reactions what is Nernst's equation and how to calculate the redox potential cell potential and free energy if you want me to prepare a video on any particular topic do write it in the comment box and also give the feedback of this video in the comment box let's start redox titration so as the name suggests redox in this you will be having one oxidizing agent and other is a reducing agent so basically the oxidizing agent is going to reduce here and the reducing agent is going to oxidize here therefore we call it redox reaction so let's say what is oxidizing agent oxidizing agent gains the electron and get reduced you can see here A plus A is the oxidation state and N is the number of electron and for the reducing species the oxidation state is going to be less as compared to the oxidizing agent. What is reducing agent? Reducing agent give up the electrons. So very simple definitions oxidizing agent gains the electron, reducing agent give up the electron and you can notice here also a plus is the oxidation state of the reducing agent and where the oxidation state of the oxidizing agent is going to be high as compared to the reducing agent. The oxidizing agent is gaining the electron and going to reduce. So how to write the Nernst equation for the given reaction? You can write the Nernst equation which is E is equal to E naught. E naught is a standard potential. E is going to be the redox potential which we need to calculate. So E is equal to E naught minus 2.303 RT divided by NF where R is a gas constant, T is the temperature in Kelvin, N is the number of electrons involved in the redox titration, F is a Faraday. So all these are the constant except N here. Logarithm of the concentration of the reducing species raised to the power its stoichiometry divided by the concentration of the oxidizing species raised to the power of its oxidizing uh, raised to the power of its stoichiometry. So basically this is the Nernst equation for the above redox titration. We will see some examples. So basically you can see here the reduction potential is calculated at the specific concentration or it is directly proportional to the concentration of the reducing and oxidizing agents. Now how to write down the half cell reaction, we will be seeing some example. You can notice here you have one species called zinc 2 plus which is going to reduce into zinc. You can notice since it is absorbing the electron, this is going to be called the oxidizing agent while zinc as a solid is considered to be reducing agent. So if you want to write down the reduction potential for the above reaction, you can write E is equal to E naught minus 0 0.059 here we have calculated the whole constant value 0 0.059 divided by n n is here 2 so you write down 2 logarithm of 1 we considered 1 for solid okay and then divided by the concentration of the oxidizing agent which is zinc 2 plus so we will be calculating and putting the concentration only for the ions here similarly if uh, you are having this redox reaction where iron 3 plus is going to reduce into iron 2 plus. So since iron 3 plus is absorbing the electron it is considered an oxidizing agent. Now for this you can write down E is equal to E naught minus 0 0.059 divided by N is involved here 1. Logarithm of concentration of reducing species which is iron 2 plus divided by the concentration of oxidizing species which is iron 3 plus. Both are ions, so we have to write down both the concentrations here. In this particular, you can notice here again hydrogen plus, which is gaining the electron, means it is going to reduce into hydrogen gas. How to calculate the E, which is reduction potential? You can see here number of electrons are 2. And here, since we are talking about gas here, so it is also dependent on the pressure, atmospheric pressure of hydrogen gas. So you write down pH2 here divided by H plus concentration of H plus raised to the power stoichiometry which is 2. So you can see what is pH2 here. It is partial pressure of hydrogen 
in atmosphere. Now another reaction where you have MnO4 minus which is going to reduce into Mn2 plus. We need to balance the equation. How to balance it? You have 4 oxygen here. So write down 4 H2O. Now it becomes 8H here. So you can write here 8H plus. Now number of atoms both side of the equilibrium are equal. You have to just balance the number of electrons. You can notice here 8 plus 1 minus is 7 plus. Here you have 2 plus. So to balance it if you add on the left hand side 5 electron this will become 2 plus and similarly on the right hand side 2 plus. So now this equation is a complete balanced equation. And for this, if you want to write down the Nernst equation, E is equal to E naught minus 0.059 divided by N. N is 5 here. Logarithm of concentration of Mn2 plus, which is a reducing species divided by concentration of the oxidizing species MnO4 minus and concentration of H plus raised to the power 8. So you can note here that potential is not only dependent on the concentration of the oxidizing and reducing species, it is also dependent on the pH of the solution. So all the ions you have to write down concentration of the reducing species divided by the concentration of oxidizing species. So it is very important to balance the equation correctly so that you get the number of electrons correctly. Next example is here is AgCl which is in the solid form. It is taking the electrons and going to form the silver and chloride minus here. So this is the complete equation which I have written. For this if you want to write down the reduction potential, number of electrons are 1 here and as I told you we write the concentration of ions only. So you can write down log concentration of Cl minus. The other two are solid. So, we will be considering the concentration as 1. So, how did we get this equation? You can see AgCl solid which is going to ionize into Ag plus and Cl minus. Now, Ag plus is again going to reduce into silver plus. Okay, silver. So, silver plus is reducing to silver by gaining one electron. And now, if you do the complete reaction, you can cancel the two and find out the final equation which is AgCl solid plus electron. So this is how you can find out the complete cell reaction here for AgCl solid. Okay, so now we'll be seeing how to calculate the potential of the titration for 50 ml of 0.1 molar of iron 2 plus with different volume of titrant, which is cerium 4 plus. In 1 molar of HCl 4, it means the formal potentials are mentioned for the two redox system. Okay, for iron 3 plus and cerium 4 plus, one is the analyte species, other is the titrant, it's given. So, you have to find out the potential before equivalence point, at equivalence point and after equivalence point. Okay, so first we will write down the cell reaction. Iron 2 plus plus C 4 plus. These two species are given here and you can see iron 2 plus is going to oxidize into iron 3 plus and cerium 4 plus is going to reduce into C 3 plus. Iron is our analyte here, C is the titrant which is acting as an oxidant here. So what are the steps involved to calculate the titration curve? First is find out the volume of the titrant need at the equivalence point that titrant is C4 plus. So how to find that volume? You can see at equivalence point the moles of iron 2 plus will be equal to the moles of C4 plus. Therefore we can write down this M1V1 is equal to M2V2 equation in terms of iron and cerium and find out the volume of the titrant which is cerium at equivalence point. So we found that it is 50 ml. At 50 ml only we started the titration. So for iron 2 volume is given, 50 ml is required at equivalence point. Now second step is before equivalence point. So before equivalence point, we know our analyte will be in excess that is iron 2 plus. So for that, we know that we always write down the reaction in the terms of reduction. So write down Fe3 plus which is uh, reducing to Fe2 plus here. 
So one electron you can write down on the left hand side to balance it. Now you can mention the Nernst equation for the above reaction. And you can find out that the number of electron is 1 here. And the concentration of the reducing species divided by the concentration of the oxidizing species. Standard potential is given in the question. So we can put the value. We have to calculate the volume, the concentration of the two. Fe2 plus and Fe3 plus. So how to calculate? Let's say after addition of 10 ml of the titrant. First, we are finding the concentration of Fe2 plus. As we know, before equivalence point, you have excess of Fe2 plus. So you can write down first uh, the moles of iron minus moles of titrant divided by total volume. And put the values for 10 ml of titrant and find out the concentration of Fe2 plus. Now, Fe3 plus con concentration is dependent on the, how much titrant you have added. Okay, according to the addition of the titrant, Fe3 plus is forming. So, we will calculate the concentration of the iron 3 plus based on the moles of titrant divided by the total volume. And so, you can calculate the concentration of Fe3 plus as well. Put the values in the Nernst equation. The standard potential is given. Number of electron is 1. After putting the values, you can calculate the redox potential for the titration before equivalence point, which is 0 0.731 volt. Now, next step is after addition of 50 ml of titrant. 50 ml is, you can notice, is the equivalence point. We have seen that 50 ml volume was required at equivalence point. So basically at equivalence point the concentration of the species are equal as you can notice here. We can put the formula which is a direct formula to calculate the potential at equivalence point. E equivalence is equal to N1 E1 naught plus N2 E2 naught divided by N1 plus N2 where N1 and N2 are the number of electrons required for the redox reaction. Even standard is formal potential is given for both and so we have calculated the equivalence potential that is 1.26 volt. Now after addition of 60 ml that you can notice it is after equivalence point and you have excess of titrant that is C4 plus. So you can write down the equation for the titrant in the redox or reduction form. C4 plus is reduced into C3 plus. After gaining one electron, you can write down the redox reaction or Nernst equation for this. Where we have written the concentration of reducing species divided by the concentration of oxidizing species. Number of electrons are given one and the formal potential is already mentioned in the question. So for this again, we need to calculate the concentration of the two species C3 plus which is again dependent on the iron. C3 plus is forming. How much it is going to form? The, that depends on the iron. So we will calculate the concentration of C3 plus by using the moles of iron divided by the total volume. And so we have calculated it. Now C4 plus we need to calculate how much amount of C4 plus is left after equivalence point then we know the excess of moles of cerium minus the moles of iron divided by total volume. You can put the values for 60 ml and find out the concentration of C4+. Put the values in the Nernst equation and find out the potential after equivalence point. Okay, so I hope you can calculate uh, the titration curve now after doing this problem. Now we will see the next category of problem. This is a different uh, problem from the redox reaction. You can say they are asking you to calculate the thermodynamic potential and the free energy for the given cell reaction. Mostly this type of problem comes for the competitive exam 
measure you can see in gate examination and also in CSIR net examination. So this particular problem is important for competitive point of view. Where the cell is given and you can notice here I have mentioned that you have left hand side here and right hand side electrode. Right hand side electrode cathode and left hand side electrode is called anode. On anode oxidation occur and on cathode reduction occurs. So this we know and the standard potential is given for both. Now we will see what is the equation to find out the cell potential. Cell potential is the E right minus E left. You can also say E cathode minus E anode. E cathode minus E anode. So first we will write down the reduction reactions for both the both side electrode. So here you can notice Ag plus and Ag is given. So Ag plus is reducing to Ag after gaining one electron. Potential is given in the question. Similarly, copper 2 plus you can mention in the form of reduction reaction, copper. Since it is 2 plus, you have to balance it by 2 electron and the reduction potential is mentioned in the question. For both, we are supposed to write down the Nernst equation. So, E redox potential for silver is you can calculate by using this equation where we have calculated one for the solid divided by the total concentration of silver which is given here 0 0.0200 and we have found the redox potential. Similarly, you can calculate the potential for redox potential for copper N is 2 here and you can use one solid for copper solid 1 as a concentration divided by the concentration of Cu2 plus which is given here again 0 0.02 and you can find out the redox potential for copper also. Once you calculate that you can find out the E cell is equal to E cathode or E right minus E anode or E left which is the copper 2 plus and we have calculated the potential just now put the values and find out the potential for the cell which is plus 0.412. So what do you mean by this positive sign? The positive sign shows that the reaction occurs spontaneously. If you have a negative sign we can say the reaction is non-spontaneous. So if you want to write down the complete cell reaction we will see at anode oxidation occurs so you can write down the copper solid on the left hand side and you can show the oxidation reaction so we can say oxidation occurs at anode and reduction you can see Ag plus is reducing to Ag so reduction occur at cathode this is the cell reaction which is happening for the above question they are also asking you to calculate the free energy and the free energy formula is del G is equal to minus NFE cell. N is the number of electrons involved is 2 here. Right? We have complete balanced equation here and if you see the total number of electrons involved in each case is 2 electrons. So you can write N here. F is a Faraday which is a constant value is given 96485 coulombs. And E cell just now we have calculated 0 0.412 volt. If you see this, this value comes in joule. If they are asking you to convert it into kilocalorie, you should know 1 kilocalorie is equal to 4184 joule. And so we are getting the free energy in negative 19 kilocalorie. So this is how you, are, you can calculate the free energy for the above cell reaction.